This video today is going to be about freedom of expression and again emphasizing the idea that things come from your assumptions, they come from your imagination, they come from your states um, and I think a lot of people get themselves tangled up or they get themselves confused when applying the law of assumption um, because they're looking at it from the the context or the perspective of things coming to them or they're attracting or they're manifesting or um, there's something outside of them that's going to grant them their wishes, you know. Um, like there's a magical genie that's, you know, they have to rub or say this three times and it'll come to them. No, it, it's less about that. It's rather it's coming from you. You are the genie, right? Um and you grant yourself your wishes by realizing this. And it's from this realization that you are essentially... The operant in power, the one that has the ability to grant yourself that which you desire. And the reason, the, the, the way you do this or the way you actually apply this is through, I believe, a deep understanding of the law. Um... Because I believe for some people, they may apply this, they may say affirmations, they may visualize, they may imagine, they may, you know, do all these different things. And yeah, they may have some success with it and they may feel like, well, your yeah, life's a bit better or things are working out a little bit more in their favor. Um, but it's not consistent, right? And I believe to really get consistent results or consistent success with this is to realize have a, have a true and deep understanding of what what this law is and what 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 the law of assumption really um, means. And for me, um, one of the greatest teachers, uh, Neville Goddard. Again, I, I love using this one. Um, an assumption, though false, if persisted and will harden into fact, is really really powerful. Um, because a lot of people get met with resistance or they meet resistance when they're trying to assume something new about themselves and, and their reasoning mind kicks into gear and says, well, this isn't real or this isn't, this isn't true or they're forcing themselves to believe something. No, the belief comes naturally from the experience of it, right? You, you get the belief by experiencing what it's like to be it already then the belief is there. And the way you do this is by removing the reasoning mind and, and actually accepting that what you're trying to assume is currently false. So as soon as you say, well, I am loved or I am respected or I am whatever it is you desire and your reasoning mind says, well, no, you're not this or no, you're not that. Um, you don't fight with it. You don't argue with it. You actually almost just look at it for what it is and realize, yeah, I understand that my, my current world is actually not showing me this or it's not, you know, but I also understand that my current world, and this is this is gold right here, my current world is simply only reflecting to me what I've previously assumed about myself, right? And the reason why this is so powerful is because you can look at your reasoning or you can look at what your outer world is showing you, but realizing that it's simply reflecting who you are. So when your reasoning mind kicks and says, well, look, this is, you're trying to say that you're loved or you're trying to say that you're respected and your outer world is not showing you that, you can go about this in two ways. You can you can tie yourself to the outer world and, and, and agree with it and just succumb to it and say, well, God damn it, yeah, I'm stuck here. Or you can realize, yes, this is what is occurring. This is what I'm experiencing. This is what I'm feeling. But I'm not stuck because I played my part in casting the shadow from my assumptions, from what I assumed, Right? So though false isn't really about it being sort of not true, but rather the though false aspect is it not being present in your outer eyes in of this moment, right? So there's no convincing need to be done. There's no, there's no forcing yourself to believe. No, it's, it's understanding that from this moment right now, you are not what you desire to be and that's okay. But you also realize that because this world is reflective in its nature, you can then assume a new state by declaring something new about yourself, right? A lot of you guys are trying to do affirmations or you're trying to visualize and you're like, well, did I feel it real or um, did I say it right or did I picture it correctly? 
well, you you you'll notice if you did it correctly or how you how you how you were feeling. Are you still feeling like, well, I have to go and do something, or I have to go and you know, um, say this, or I have to do that? No, if you if you if you actually allow yourself to experience the the acting of itself you know and i've used this analogy multiple times you don't have you don't have to you don't have to think or convince yourself that a movie is real you could be watching a cartoon or you could be watching a fiction movie and you can still enjoy the experience of it you can still get the emotions from the movie you can still laugh from the movie you can still you know experience all these array of emotions from the movie despite it being false or despite it not being a real thing in the outer world but rather a play um and you can look at your imagination the same way. View it as a play, and then as you experience the play, it gives you these feelings. It gives you it gives you these sensations or tonalities of reality. And it's from this that you know that you've essentially you've successfully um, sat in the chair of experiencing that which you wish to experience, right? So, you know. Um, when you go to assume something new about yourself, you don't fight with the reasoning mind. You don't duel with it. You don't try to reason with it because its reasoning is attached to the outer man. But the outer man is only seeing what the inner man has previously assumed true about themselves. So it actually doesn't make sense for you to fight with it. So in a lot of ways, your reasoning is actually the one that's that's flawed because you played your part in creating the reasoning, Right? All the, all the things that you're reasoning or using your logical mind to sort of break down and say, well, this happened because of this or this happened because of that. There will be an assumption somewhere within you at some point or a seed from your imagination that planted and now that, fruit's, that fruit has now grown. You have to really understand how powerful this is, right? And it's from this understanding that you can then free yourself and look, well, okay, maybe I have a shitty harvest now. Maybe I don't like what I, what I want now. Or maybe I don't like what I'm seeing right now. But that's okay. Am I going to identify myself perpetually with the outer man? Or am I going to identify myself with the inner man? The one that cast, that cast these seeds in the first place. Right? Or am I going to identify myself with the outer man and always be in a state of reactivity when I see something that I don't like without realizing what the true cause is? And when you identify yourself with the inner man and realize what well, the cause is you or the cause is I am, it gives you a lot more freedom to then go, well, okay, despite me seeing or experiencing what I want to experience, I can assume something new about myself, though false. But if I persist in this new assumption, it will harden into fact, right? And that is essentially the key right there. It's about massaging yourself into the new state of being it's about maneuvering yourself into the new assumptions without reason and the way you remove the reason is by identifying yourself with the inner man and furthermore realizing that you created your reason anyway so when you start to reason and you start to work out or start to sort of conjure up well how's this going to happen why is it going to happen when's it going to happen you're likely identifying yourself with the outer man again who's Who's um, lives in a world of separation? He doesn't. He doesn't. He feels powerless because things outside of him occur, and he doesn't. He doesn't know what he can do or what he should do or how how he should go about something. But the inner man doesn't care. The inner man knows that he is essentially the cause, or she is the cause, right? And she real or he she or he realizes that from their expression, it's projected in the outer world. And for you to realize how this is effective in real time, you can you can do a quick exercise right here, right now. You can understand this from, you know, um, what I'm trying to say. Close your eyes. And again, you can you can simply just imagine, right? You know, just imagine yourself, you know, um, maybe... doing something fun in your mind, you know, and just get lost in it. Whatever it is, is I don't know what's going to be fun for you, but just imagine yourself doing something fun and you'll start to realize that the shift will actually occur in your body first. That's the first sign of projection from the inner man. You may actually smile 
you may actually, you know, feel a little bit, you know, lighter. You may feel a little bit more at ease. Whatever it is you're imagining that makes you feel these things. And the reason I say this is because you already do this. When you conjure up something scary, you conjure up a nightmare. The first sign is, again, is in, is in, the, is in your body. You may feel tightness of your chest if you imagine something scary, or you, you may, your complexion may get a, get a bit, little bit paler. You may get sweaty palms, right? But you don't have to actually be, the outer man doesn't even have to be experiencing it, but the inner man is experiencing it, and then the outer man then receives the, is essentially just projecting what the inner man is, is, is imagining, right? And that's essentially the first sign. So all we're doing is is allowing ourselves to imagine without the reasoning, because you're already removing reasoning when you scare when you when you conjure up something scary, or you have a nightmare. How many times have you imagined something awful or something that is so unlikely to ever happen, right? That your reasoning mind isn't even there, but it it, it feels real, and then your physical sensations, your body try to convince you that it's real and that it's likely to happen. But your reasoning mind isn't even in the equation. So you already do this, but just with things that are negative. So when you understand this, it's a lot easier for you to sort of go, well, I can imagine something great and wonderful without having to use my reasoning mind. That's going to self-sabotage me into not allowing to experience something beautiful and wonderful. Right? So the, 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 the takeaways from this video, guys, is essentially... Identif learn to identify yourself with the inner man, which is essentially your I am, your awareness, your imagination, which is the cause, which is the primary cause of everything, right? Learn to identify yourself with that. And this inner man doesn't need reasoning to, to imagine something, right? And, the, and if you do find yourself battling with reason, realize that, okay, I don't have to convince myself of anything. I, I can imagine something. I don't even have to convince myself it's real. I can just experience it, right? Um... And you'll find that by, by, by accepting that it's currently false or just by not even getting into a battle with your reasoning mind and trying to convince you, all oh, this isn't real, that's not real. You actually give yourself the experience. And then it's in giving yourself the experience that you actually start to feel different. And then it's almost like your body then starts to feel different, right? And there's an actual change in real time. And you persist in that despite it being false, right? Right? So you're free to express and you persist in this, this freedom of expression or you persist in this new way of being and you do it daily. You do it all the time. You do it whenever your awareness slips out. You just, okay, you, you just harness yourself back in and realize what you're doing. If you find yourself slipping into an unfavorable place, ask yourself, can you imagine something more, more wonderful right now despite what you may be seeing or experiencing? And the answer will um, almost always be yes. And... You just have to learn to be more aware and give yourself the permission to assume something new and more wonderful about yourself, despite it being false, and you persist. Yeah, it's been your boy. Peace, power, prosperity, and love always. If you haven't already, grab the uh, new audiobook that I've uh, just released, Beyond Boundaries. I'll leave a link for it in the description. Um, as long with a f as long um, along with a few of my other links, um, some of my Reddit writing. I do some writings on Reddit. If you want to um, check that out, and um, yeah, all right.